giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Barsham Yahweh Shai, Barsham Rakakwadash, Shalom to the Lord's elect. And once again, it's another video. Uh, I'm going to give the title of this video The Importance of a Good Instructor. The importance of a good instructor, as in the teacher, the importance of a good instructor and to be well instructed. That's what I believe I'm going to call this. It's a working title, so, you know, I just put it out there. The importance of a good instructor and to be well instructed. And of course, I'm referring to the scriptures. Now, what inspired me to do this video was a video I was watching here earlier when I, um, you know, I went to the gym earlier, and while I was uh, working out on the treadmill, I was listening to this video here by uh, Elder Karatiza of uh, GMS Vegas Sit Downs. That's his channel, GMS Vegas Sit Downs. That's it right there. The title of this video is It's Embarrassing as an Israelite defender of the gospel to take L's to low-level Christians. Now, this has to do with uh, Sakari, as you're about to hear. And uh, one of their members made a statement saying that he keeps the law perfectly. You know, um, this is one of the things that I guess they believe, which is total delusion that I've actually heard them say they don't sin. Some of their members, they don't sin. And now this guy, <clears throat> Alizar, actually said that he doesn't sin. And now this guy um, that you're about to hear, a member of the Sakari says, or said that uh, he keeps the law perfectly. All right, so those are nothing but delusions. You know, when you... Uh, you check out what the scriptures is really saying about our sinful nature, you see that those guys are under delusions. You know, we're in, you know, uh, we're in these sinful bodies, and by default, we have a sinful nature. The body that we're in is, is very conducive to sin, okay? Very conducive to sin. And that's why we have to be changed. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So you have fast uh, keeping the law. <clears throat> so let me uh, jump down to verse 15, because this is what's happening with the younger dudes up under them. All right. It's uh, Matthew 23 and 15, and it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. A, a newly convert and when he is made and you know, when you when you succeed at it you make him two four twofold more the child of hell than yourselves you know and they get you know that same zealous spirit right i mean and they named themselves after the sakari you know they they, they were a zealot group yeah um the fact that they named the you know alazar named the group Sakari, which, you know, the Bible teaches us about reincarnation. So the same spirits that was indeed of the Sakari, it makes sense they would come back in this generation. And even al admitted, yeah, he read some passage and he said, yeah, we those guys. So indeed, they very well may be the ancient Sakari back in the past. We know that re uh, reincarnation is in the scriptures. But... The, the, the fact of the matter is the Sakari was zealots and they were not known to be spiritual nor follow Yahweh Shai. You know, they, they were, really they were troublemakers. All right, they were also known as backstabbers because they, the Sakari, when you go back into history, they'd carry a small dark, uh, dagger. Sakari is also known as dagger men, dagger men, or hit men. Okay, when you look up the term, they were also called dagger men because they'd hide a small dagger within their garment and come up from behind and stab somebody in the back. They were literally backstabbers, okay, and they were assassins. 
So they weren't the most spiritual dudes on the block, you know? Now, w did you have zealots among uh, the uh, individuals that turned their life from being a zealot to following Yahweh Shai? Did you have zealots among the disciples? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, among the 12, you had one guy who was a zealot, uh, Simon Zelotes. Okay? Matter of fact, let's see if we can find that. Type in who was Simon. Oops. Zelotes. Okay, here we go. Simon the Zealot. <laughs> of course, they got him. <laughs> they got him looking like an Edomite. Simon Zealot, or Simon the Canaanite, or Simon the Cana Canaan, was one of the most obscure among the apostles of Yahweh Shai. In other words, not, not too much was known about him, according to that passage. But... This proves my point. Among the disciples, you had one individual that was a zealot. And I do believe Judas Iscariot also was a zealot. I do believe. As a matter of fact, let's type in that. Was Judas Iscariot a zealot? So you had zealots even among... Yeah, was Judas Iscariot a zealot? How do we know that Judas was probably a zealot? By his surname, Iscariot. Researchers believe this is a form of the title Sakari, mm. meaning Dagomen. That's what I said earlier. A group of ultra zealots <laughs> who carried a knife with them, right, a dagger, at all times to be prepared to assassinate traitors and cap capitulators. Okay, so they were staunchly against the Roman Empire. And anyone they deemed the traitor, they had a dagger for them. And usually they'd stick them in the back. So they, they were quintessential backstabbers, the Sakari. Okay? So, there's the point. You had zealots even among Yahweh Shai's disciples. Okay? Let's get back to the video. You know, they they, they were a Z like group. But their their zeal is in the wrong direction. Right, and uh this guy uh Al Azar he made a statement, he said Yahweh is not to be worshipped. Now I don't know if he still feels that way, but that's a hell of a statement to make. Especially when you're a novice, and Al-Azhar is every bit of the word novice, okay? Every bit of the word novice. And he's the leader of that group. And then his second in command is Deacon Akar. Now, Al-Azhar should, he should correct that guy that you, you know, the, uh, the brother from uh, Vegas, Elder Karatazar. He's about to play the clip of a guy from Sakari. I don't know what group, what chapter, what state, but the guy made the statement, he keeps the law perfect. Now, Al-Azhar, but see, that's the thing, Al-Azhar teaches that they don't sin. He said he doesn't sin, so maybe he even believes that too, that he keeps the law perfect. And I don't know the stance, the stance that Deacon Hakar has on that, but maybe they actually believe that, which, which proves that they're under delusion, okay? 
But if that's not the case, the scriptures say to know the state of your flock. Yep, it is right here. The book of Proverbs 27 and 23, it says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks. Meaning, you're supposed to know the state of the men that you've taught. What is their uh, um, mental state concerning the gospel? Do they understand the scriptures? Do they understand the breakdowns? You know, that's an example of being diligent to know the state of your flocks, especially when you're a leader. See, that's, see you got guys who want to be leaders and call the shots, but when it comes to, uh, when it comes to being, um, to being uh, uh, shepherds and really caring for the flock, they act more like hirelings, all right? They don't care what, what uh, doctrine is taught among their group. <clears throat> And that's not being diligent to know the state of your flocks. Like it says here, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. The flocks and the herds are a metaphor for the individuals that are coming into your church, your members. Your members, the, the flocks and the herds here in this scripture is a metaphor for your members. So you're supposed to know the state, the mental state of your members. Are they catching on? Are they learning? You know, you're supposed to test them. You're supposed to, uh, you know, you were you supposed to, um, you were supposed to uh, know if they're coming up on a level. Now, that guy that made the statement, he, he keeps the law perfect. He, he, that guy ain't coming up on no level. That guy is being instructed the wrong way. And so, so happens that a wacky tacky Christian put him on the spot and bested him, man. Eh? By him making that statement, which I'm about to play for you, because <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Elder Karadza got it queued up. Um, let's read that in the NLT, Proverbs 27 and th 23. Know the state of your flocks, put your heart into caring for your herds. Right, don't act like a hireling. And some of these leaders, they act more like hirelings, and the Bible speaks about a hireling. And a hireling doesn't care for the flock. What is a hireling, by the way? That's one who does the work or does the job for money. His main concern is money. His main concern, his main concern is not the flock, which is a metaphor for the members of his, of his congregation, making sure they're taught right, making sure they understand the scriptures. Well, then again, he, he himself, the leader, he don't really understand the scriptures like he should. Okay? Truth be told. <clears throat> here it is right here, John 10 and 12. But he that is an hireling, let's look at that word hireling. Matter of fact, let's go to the scripture and then we can look up the word hireling. Hireling. A person employed to undertake menial work. Uh, a person employed to undertake menial work. Uh, let's read the next one. This is the more... Um, the definition that makes sense. A person who works purely for material reward. See that? So they, their main concern is about the money. That's a hireling. What does hireling mean in the Bible? Let's see what that says. Hireling, a laborer employed on hire for a limited time. <coughs> He's all about the money. His main motivation is the money. Okay? That's one of the reasons why Alizar admires um, Bishop Nathaniel and the IUIC Church. Because of all the money that th this is a group, the IUIC Church is worth over $150 million. So obviously uh, Alizar envies that. That's why he, he gave uh, IUIC um, such an endorsement. Okay? So... 
let's read it. It says, But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, because the, really the sheep belongs to Yahweh Shai. Okay? The sheep belongs to Yahweh Shai. And our job is to feed Jeremiah 3 and 15. Our job is to feed the sheep uh, with knowledge and understanding. Okay? So those men are supposed to be instructed correctly. Okay? But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, see if the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And who's, who's the wolf? The, the wolf is the one that seeks to corrupt the sheep. All right? The wolf seeks to devour the sheep. Okay, so the wolf would be a metaphor for a guy who seeks to corrupt the congregation with false doctrine. That would be a wolf. A guy who seeks to corrupt the congregation, the sheep as it were, with false doctrine. That's a metaphor for the wolf. Okay? Or the wolf is a metaphor for that. Who's owned the sheep or not, and like I said, the sheep belongs to Yahweh Shai. Seeing the wolf coming, coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Right, with his false doctrine. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. He's all, he's, all, he's all about the money. He's all, he's all about carnal things and not spiritual things. He's a hireling. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. <coughs> <coughs> Let's read that in the um, NLT. So you got, a lot of, you got a lot of Israelites out there that are hirelings. And you can spot them by their works. They don't really care about the sheep. And that's why certain groups, their members are not instructed correctly. Like the scripture said, the previous scripture, be diligent to know the state of your flocks. Proverbs 27 and 23, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to, their, to thy herds. A hireling is not going to do that. A hireling is not going to do that. Okay, you got a lot of hirelings in this thing of ours. John 10 and 12. A hired hand or a hireling will run when he sees a wolf coming. And again, like I said, the, the wolf is a metaphor for an individual coming with a false doctrine and seeking to corrupt the church. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him. And he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's, on, because he's working only for the money. So you got certain Israelites out there in leadership positions that are only in it for the money. Only in it for the money. Okay? The hired hand runs away because he work, he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. So that's plain, man. That is plain. Okay. So let's get back to the video. Their, their zeal is in the wrong direction. All right. They have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. So what do, what do they do? They're establishing their own righteousness, trying to go back to that old uh, uh levitical priestly order instead of submitting themselves to the righteousness of the most high which is of what faith yeah and that's alazar that's that's what he's trying to do he's, he's trying to go the route of the law statutes and commandments making him perfect which is totally ridiculous all right first of all to be justified by the law you have to keep all the laws Let's read that. Uh, data. That's first and foremost. And there are other points to be made too. Okay, I thought it was in, I think I said James, but it's actually in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter, the second verse. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, which goes back to the law, Yahweh Shai shall profit you nothing. Because you had certain uh, Pharisees 
Israelites, if you will, you know, from the seven kingdom tribe of Ju uh, the seven kingdom tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, that boasted in their circumcision. Okay, but like Yahweh said, but like Apostle Paul said, Yahweh shall profit you nothing. He said that to the Israelites in Galatia. Hence the the name of the book or the letter rather, which became a book, Galatians. The third verse. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor. If you want to boast in your circumcision, which you had Israel, you had uh, Judites that did that back then, which they're Israelites, uh, southern kingdom. You had Israelites that did that back then. They boast in their circumcision. So the Apostle Paul is saying, if you want to bro boast in your circumcision, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So now the circumcision is part of the law. That was a law given to our forefather Abraham and handed down to our forefathers, to us Israelites. But the law is a lot more than circumcision. There are many other laws outside of circumcision. So for you to be truly, uh, for you to be a truly law-abiding Israelite, you have to keep all the laws, not just some or one. You have to keep all the laws. That's what, that's what uh, the Apostle Paul is saying here, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Let's read that in the NLT. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision, which goes back to the law, to make you right with the Heavenly Father, there you go, then Yahweh will be of no benefit to you. And the, the truth is, Yahweh is the one that's going to perfect this, not the law. Even though Yahweh is the law personified. All right, not us keeping the law is going to bring perfection. Because there's only certain laws we can keep. Most of the laws we can't keep in captivity. Now, to be justified by the law, you just heard what Apostle Paul said. You are, we are debtor to do the whole law. And it's simply impossible to keep all the laws the Heavenly Father has given us in this captivity. It's impossible. So I don't know why these Israelites are... Well, I do know why. That's, that, that's the delusion that the Heavenly Father put them under. There's a scripture where it says, I will choose their delusions. If you think that the law is going to make you perfect, you are deluded. Okay, Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to make us perfect when he literally delivers us into those chariots. And once we hit those chariots, we'll become perfect. And to confirm that, you had a brother, I was listening to the video earlier, he had a dream about that very subject. Okay, he had a dream about that very subject where he was uh, abducted and uh, he said he could see the he could see America burning. He was taking thousands of miles up into the air. And he, he, he said it was, it was extremely quick. Okay, he was, he was abducted, he was taken up. And he, he felt, at first he was afraid, like the brother kept saying, he's afraid of heights. So at first he was afraid, but then after a while he, he, he didn't feel fear anymore. That's when he entered his new body. Now, when he was telling his testimony, I think that's the brother from, uh, I forgot his name, but I think that's the brother from Des Moines. I could be wrong. If the brother should see this video, he can uh, straighten me out on that, on the facts, on the comment board. Um, yeah, he, um, he said he was afraid, but once he entered into that new body, he wasn't afraid anymore. And like I said, when, while, while I was listening to his video, the scripture in Joel came to mind. Your young men shall see visions and, visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, he believes it was a vision he saw in his dream. He's not saying that he definitely knows he's going to make it. The brother was humble about it, but he did see a vision. He did see a vision of, of himself being abducted from the destruction by the chariot and being changed. So that was a powerful vision indeed. And that confirms what the scriptures have been telling us. How, how the elect are going to be delivered and changed in the twinkling of an eye, okay, when Yahweh Shai comes. So that's what's going to bring us salvation. Yahweh Shai, not just salvation, us, our bodies being changed too. Not just salvation being saved from the, from the fire of destruction that's going to come from the nuclear missiles and the chariots. Right here in America, America burning red hot because America is going to be turned into a lake of fire. So many missiles are going to hit this place along with the chariots bringing fire. 
is going to turn this place into a lake of fire. And, this, and the only ones making it out of here are the elect of the nation of Israel, period. Everybody else will die in that destruction. So that's the very meaning of salvation, which the wacky tacky Christian don't even know the very meaning of salvation. To be delivered from that fire is the very meaning of salvation. And now, the, after the deliverance, it don't stop there. Your body's got to be changed. So our bodies are going to be changed. We're going to go from being mortals to immortal, like it says in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And then uh, further down the line, the uh, elect of, the, of, the, of Yahweh Shai, beginning with the elect, they're going to receive crowns on their heads for defending Yahweh Shai's gospel in this world. They're going to receive crowns on their heads. The Apostle Paul talked about that. What is that, 1 Timothy 4? He said, henceforth, as a matter of fact, let's read that. First Timothy, the fourth chapter. I think it's the latter part of the verses. Okay. I guess not. Or is it second Timothy? Let's try second Timothy. Four and seventeen. Yeah, it is. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, and the seventh verse. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This is right before the Apostle Paul said that, right before he was beheaded. Okay? So he made the statement, henceforth, there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness. And he's, he's back in this generation. And he's still in the work, doing the work diligently. Okay? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. See that? So check it out. We're going to receive salvation from the fire. Our bodies be changed. And we're going to receive a crown, a literal crown. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That's the day when Yahweh Shai comes back. So that's a future prophecy right there. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Look at that. Let's read that in the NLT. And now the prize awaits me. So we're all fighting for the prize when Yahweh Shai comes back so he can give us that prize. Salvation, our bodies being changed, and a crown. Check that out. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, and this is a literal crown, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, on his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Yeah, guys like us, man, that really understand these scriptures and, who, and, and what, what uh, instrument is going to bring us salvation. It ain't the law. It's Yahweh Shai. Okay? He's the one that's going to bring us salvation. Let's get back to the video. Previously ordered, instead of submitting themselves to the righteousness of the Most High, which is of what? Faith. Right. They're telling you, no, it's about the works. Yeah, the righteousness of the Most High is faith in Yahweh Shai, to believe in Yahweh Shai. Okay? Believe that when he comes, he will bring us salvation. After all, it is written in uh, Matthew 24 and 30, when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to gather his elect. So we hope we're part of his elect. If we're part of Yahweh Shai's elect, we're going to receive salvation. And our bodies are going to be changed. And uh, we're going to receive that crown, man. Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Those are the chariots, the so-called UFOs with power and great glory, All right? Because Yahweh Shai is going to be coming with a multitude of angels on that day. And, that, and on, a, on that very day, you're going to have World War III happening, okay? Uh, the the uh, Esau and the other nations, they're going to mount up their armies against Yahweh Shai and the angels. That's, that's that scripture in the uh, book of Revelation where it speaks about there was war in heaven. That's going to take place on the day of the Lord. It's going to be a battle between Esau, 
the other nations, their military forces, and Yahweh Shai and the angels. And I don't have to tell you who's going to win. <laughs> okay. It says, and then shall appear the, si the, sight, the, si the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And that's everybody on the planet earth. As it is written, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Revelation 1 and 7. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Here's the point. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to, up to the other. So that's all across the world. And the majority of the elect is going to be delivered here in America. Because the Lord is going to go over the whole known earth. He's going to come from the east and work his way to the west. And as he works his way, he's going to be gathering his elect. Now, the majority of the elect are going to be gathered here in, the, in America, in particular North America, before the Lord destroys it. Okay? America was also known as the ends of the world, the ends of the earth, also known as the fourth part of the world. Okay? So, so, so it says from one end of heaven to the other. So America is known as the end of the, of, uh, the world. At one time, it was known as the end of the world before it got the term America. It was known as the end, ends of the world, also the fourth part of the world. Now, the term America didn't come about to, what, 1507, I believe it was, the year for that. Martin Walsey Mueller, which was a cartographer, put the name America, which was inspired by the, uh, the so-called explorer, which was nothing but a, a, a colonizer for, for Esau. That's really what they were. The, the explorers were nothing but colonizers for Esau. This is when this is during the Renaissance period when the when the Edomites came back in power, and they were taking over the whole known world. That was that deadly wound that was healed, which was really the Roman Empire. But the Romans were what? The Romans were Edomites. Okay, so the deadly wound was healed. They came back into power, beginning with the Borgia family, the latter part of the 1300s. And then uh, you had all these uh, so-called conquistadors, which were really colonizers for the Edomites. Uh, uh, Amerigo Vespucci being one of them. It was Amerigo Vespucci that inspired Martin Walsemuller to put the term America on the map. When America was before that known as the fourth part of the world or the ends of the earth. Okay? And speaking of Sakari... You know, we always keep it real. It was Al-Azhar that brought out the information about America being, a, I think it, uh, the, the, he said, it, the fourth part of the world. He had some article on it, maybe some book. I don't remember all the specifics. All right? So the greatest deliverance is going to take place here in America. The greatest deliverance of the elect. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. And he, shall, and he will send out his angels with a mighty blast of a trumpet, and they shall gather his chosen ones from all over the world. See? From the farthest ends of the, of the earth and heaven, which is the Americas. America in particular. Okay? So let's get back to the video. They're telling you no, it's about the works. At least by what this dude... Uh, the yeah. They're telling you it's about the works. But the scripture is very plain on this. No man is justified. Let's read that. No man. Doesn't mean we don't keep the law to the best of our ability. The Apostle Paul say, yea, we established the law. But to say that the law is what's going to save us, our righteousness is what's going to save us, nope. The Lord said, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's Isaiah, the 64th chapter. So now what? It's clear that these Israelites, they don't understand. Because why? Because they haven't been instructed correctly. That's why I named this video uh, the, the importance of a good instructor and, and to be well instructed. Okay? No man is justified. You have to understand what you're involved in. Let's read it. This is plain. This is plain. I can't wait to read it in the NLT. Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So why do you have Israelites boasting about the law? And many of them don't even know the law like that. 
They're boasting about something they don't even really know. That they're not well ver adversed in. Or well versed in. I believe the word is versed. Not adverse. They're not even well versed in the law. Apostle Paul, he knew the law backwards and forwards, yet he didn't boast about the law. That's why he made that statement. He said he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. The Pharisees were known to know the law. So he knew the law backwards and forwards. He came to the conclusion it's not about the law. It's about faith in Yahweh Shai. The Apostle Paul came to that conclusion. And Yahweh Shai is the law personified anyway. So by default, if you really believe in Yahweh Shai that he's going to deliver you and have mercy on you, then by default, you, you're keeping the law. Because Yahweh Shai is the law personified. Remember, Yahweh Shai is the mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. So you can't bypass the mediator, Yahweh Shai, to get to the Heavenly Father. It don't work that way. The Heavenly Father set up Yahweh Shai to be our mediator. Also, it is written of Yahweh Shai, he is the propitiation of our, of our wicked state. Propitiation means the healing. He, he, he brought healing between us, us wicked, despicable Israelites. And we are wicked and despicable. Even though we're in the truth, we're still wicked and despicable. We're plagued with wicked, wretched thoughts. Yahweh Shai put peace between us and the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Because remember, the Heavenly Father Yahweh had cast us Israelites away because of our wickedness. So there had to be a propitiation of that breach. And that's what Yahweh Shai came to do. He came to be the propitiation for that breach, the breach between us and the Heavenly Father. The word propitiation means the healing. The healing. And we're healed through Yahweh Shai, not the law. So this is why the Apostle Paul says what he says here. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So these Israelites, they, need, they really need to stop boasting about the law. Something they don't even know or really understand. At this point, they're just making themselves look foolish, as you're about to see. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai. See? Just believe it in Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, we believe that Yahweh Shai, because we know we come short every day. We come short concerning being sinless. We come short miserably. We're plagued with sins, man. We are wretched sinners, man. I'll be the first to tell you I'm a goddamn wretched sinner. I'm plagued with wicked thoughts, sinful thoughts, sinful lust, etc., etc., man. Because I'm in this, I'm in this flesh. That's why I desire to be out of this flesh and to be changed. To receive that indestructible body, that sinless body that Yahweh Shai told us about through the prophets. And all you brothers that uh, understand what you're involved in, you desire the same thing. You desire to be made perfect. We haven't been made perfect yet. What the hell is that Sakari guy talking about? He keeps the law perfectly. The only way you can keep the law perfectly, my man, is if you were perfected. If, you, if your body was changed. If you received that glorious deliverance and then your body you know that glorious deliverance into the chariot and then your body was changed in a twinkling of, a, of an eye that's when you can say that you keep all the laws you can boldly say you keep all the laws until then you can't say that you, you'd be delusional and that's why that wacky tacky christian capitalized on that cigar remember but again i blame the, i blame the leadership if they, if they weren't too busy trying to be a goddamn hireling and really concentrate on the flock and give them the right kind of food pursuant to Jer Jeremiah 3 and 15, you wouldn't have Sakari members making, a, making an ass out of themselves. Galatians 2 and 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai. There you go, that's plain. Even we have believed in Yahweh Shai that we might be justified by faith of Yahweh Shai, not by the law. And not by the works of the law. Exactly. For by the works of the law shall no flesh, and no flesh as in the metaphor of a brother, no brother is going to be justified by the works of the law. Shall no flesh be justified, let alone be saved. You know, we're not being saved because of the works of the law, because of our works. We're simply being saved because we believe in Yahweh Shai and as members of the first fruits, the, the, the firstborn, by default, that entitles us to be delivered. Because the firstborn, the first fruits, I read that in the last video I did, 
in, in uh, Exodus 13 and 2, it tells you the firstborn, the first fruits belong unto the Heavenly Father. Clearly it tells you that in the scripture. So the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, going to give him the truth. Begin with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was the firstborn of the firstborn. He was the very first spirit created. Okay? That's why he got everything. He even got the position of sitting at the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father. How powerful is that? Galatians 2 and 16. Yet we know that a person is made right with the Heavenly Father by faith in Yahweh Shai and not by obeying the law. Let's read that again, man. Yet we know that a person is made right with Yahweh by faith in Yahweh Shai. And you know, you got the, like the IUIC, they spend more time talking about the law, statutes, and commandments, something they don't even really know or understand. They spend more time talking about that than they do the Lord. First of all, they call him Jesus Christ, which is profane. Now, going back to the law, it tells you in the book of Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter, around the 26th verse, as, as, a, as a matter of fact, let me just get it, because that's a law. They don't keep that law. Because they're combining the profane with the, um, they're combining the unclean or the profane with the clean. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel 22. So this is one law they don't keep among many. I've seen many of the IUIC members with uh, lined up foreheads. That's a violation of the law. Shall make no, you shall not. Uh, you shall not make, uh, how's it go? Matter of fact, you know what? Bear with me for a minute. Leviticus 19, 28. You shall not round the corners of your heads. That's it. I couldn't think of the uh, verse. Uh, it is right here. Leviticus 19 and 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads. In other words, get an edge up. Like a lot of uh, our people get at the barber shop. According, according to the Heavenly Father, that's not allowed. That's a sin. That's a violation of that this law right here. You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. The same thing is said in the 21st chapter of the same book. And the 5th verse. Let's take a look at that. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beards, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. It's what you call tribal marks. So we got many laws on, on how to dress, what to wear. There's a law where it says when you wear your garment, you're supposed to have a border of blue and fringes. That's Numbers 15, Numbers 15 and uh, 38, 37 and 38. So there's laws on what to wear, there's laws on what to eat, there's ceremonial laws, laws on the high holy days, what to do at, at the high holy day, the ceremony, what to do. So there are many laws, man, and there's some laws, and it tells you the nature of the Passover. You're supposed to get a lamb unblemished and lamb had to be raised up, you know, most, most uh, raised up in, in a certain holy state, so to speak roughly paraphrasing the scripture, most of the lamb we get for Passover, we have to buy that from Esau. All right, we have to buy it at the store. Packaged lamb and all of that, man. So we're not really keeping the Passover the way, according to the law, when the Passover was instituted, we're not keeping it that way, as it's supposed to be kept. So why are these dudes boasting about the law? <laughs> that shows me they don't, they don't, they have little understanding concerning these scriptures. Leviticus 21, 4 and 5 in the NLT. But a priest must not defile himself and make himself unclean for someone who is related to him only by marriage. The priest must not shave off their head, shave, shave, the priest must not shave their heads, like get a bald head, or trim their beards or cut their bodies. Okay. You know, shave off the corner of your beard, meaning lining your beard up. Which is what the Egyptians did. Again, there's nothing, there's no new thing under the sun. Let's get back to the video.
the uh, the leader of this particular Sakari camp that was out there speaking. So I'm gonna let y'all hear it. He, first, the first thing he said was, uh, "There." Oh, by the way, I didn't read that scripture. Ezekiel 22 and 26. The priests have violated my law, and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy Yahweh Shem Yahushai and profane Jesus Christ. And you saw the video where Nate, he first he mentions Jesus Christ. He said, "We await our King Jesus Christ or Jesus the Christ." Then he said, Yahweh Shem Yahushai. So he, what he did was he didn't put no difference between that which is holy, which is the Hebrew name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. He didn't put no difference between those holy Hebrew names and the, the title of Jesus Christ, which is profane, which the, 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 the name of, our, of the only begotten Son of the Lord was not Jesus or Christ. That's what you call watered down Greek. The, the term would have been Iesus Christos. Now we know when we go back to the history during the time of our Lord, you had a fake God that was introduced to the Israelites during the time of Ptolemy, 280 BC, a fake God known as Serapis Christus, which was also called Iesus Christos, what, what would later become known as Jesus Christ. This is the worshiping of the supposedly the only begotten son of the Lord as a so-called black, as a so-called white man, which is totally ridiculous. That ain't nothing but Caesar Boger, man. Caesar Boger slash Serapis Christus. Really Serapis Christus, because it goes back to Serapis Christus. It was a fake god that Ptolemy I gave the Israelites in Egypt, Alexandria, Egypt. And during the early century AD, the first century AD, Serapis Christus worship was heavy among the different groups. Just like Jesus Christ's worship is heavy today. When you talk about Jesus Christ, you're really talking about Serapis Christus, which is based upon Egyptian philosophy. When you do your research, most of our people have not done their research. Their research. Anyway, Ezekiel 22 and 26, her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed the difference between the unclean and the clean. The unclean is Jesus Christ. The clean is Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. I am profaned among them. Check that out. Let's get back to the video. So I'm gonna let y'all hear. He, first, the first thing he said was, uh, "They're keeping the law perfectly." Let me let me run that back. Yeah, totally ridiculous. Then the, the alternative is they don't want to. It, that means they're being deceptive. They are intentionally twisting the scriptures. Yeah, well, you know, you already know this, this dude over here. He, he don't know the scriptures like that. He just thinks he does do. But that statement he made is true. You can't be twisting the scriptures. You can't be deceptive. You can't be dishonest. You got to be, the scriptures speak about in, this, in sincerity of heart, in singleness of heart. You got to be honest all the way down the line, especially when you teach these scriptures. You have to be honest. You have to be sincere too. You can't be twisting the scriptures. If you, if you don't know what something means, you, you say, look, I don't know what that means. And you seek to be instructed concerning its meaning. You don't just wing it, man. You got certain Israelites out there winging it. Okay, that, that's wickedness. You know, the scripture says he is damned. How's that go? Whatsoever is not of faith is not of faith you got to be fully persuaded in your own mind that this is the truth especially when you're teaching it it is right here romans 14 and 23 and he that doubteth is damned if he eat eat what eat with our minds if you doubt the scriptures the validity of the scriptures and you're still eating it meaning with your mind all right, as the scripture has said, you were damned because you really don't believe. You really don't believe. He that doubteth is damned if he eat, meaning eat with your mind. It's a metaphor. Because he eateth not of faith. 
See, we learn this, these scriptures by faith. And faith is a gift given to us by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. He eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. See, so when we do this work, we faithfully do it with, with, all, with all our hearts. We, we put our, our spirit into it. Okay? Knowing that we will receive a great reward. Let's get back to the video for their own benefit and so let's just listen to this. i saw this someone sent me this and this is this is them in a nutshell yeah i keep the law perfectly so do it. So you just broke the law bro. he said he keep the law perfectly <laughs> you're not keeping the law perfectly bro it's impossible it's impossible and even if you were to keep the law perfectly like i said earlier all our righteousness which goes back to the law is as filthy rags we ain't being accepted by Yahweh until Yahweh Shai changes us. That's the deal, man. We are not going to be accepted by Yahweh until Yahweh Shai changes us. And how's he going to change us? Well, when he comes back in those chariots. All our righteousness. the heck you gotta be kidding me man you know what let's go to Isaiah 64 when I guess we're gonna have to do it the hard way Isaiah 64 here it is right here Isaiah 64 and oh that's why it didn't come up righteousness is righteousnesses which goes back to the law oh check this out i didn't even notice that the last time i did the video the word righteous is not just righteous it's righteousnesses righteousnesses isaiah 64 and 6 but we are all as an unclean thing because yeah, we're in an unclean flesh and all our righteousnesses going back to the law everything we be boasting in uh, as filthy rags so where's the room to boast and this is why the apostle paul said least not by law uh, not by how he said least any man should boast let's get there least any man should boast least any man should it better come up <laughs> i can't believe this should boast. Let's try boast. Should boast. I wonder if it's going to come up. Oh. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Ephesians 2 and 9. Not of works, least any man should boast. Right. Works as in going back to the law. But we're not being saved by our works. Okay. Um, your priests have violated my instructions and defiled my holy things. They make no distinction between what is holy and what is not. Yep, I, I see he's good for that. And they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonially clean and unclean. They disregard my Sabbath days so that I am dishonored among them. And they claim they keep the Sabbath. The IUIC, but they, they keep it on, on the Friday night sundown and Saturday night sundown. The only way that the Sabbath could be on that night is if the new moon. The Sabbath, the Sabbath is regulated by the new moon. So the point is, any day during the week, the, the Sabbath could fall in. And you, you know the deal with the Sabbath. You're supposed to abstain from sex and your pleasure for, for, um, for what? For uh, 24 hours from, from sundown to sundown. The Sabbath day. It so happens that the Sabbath this week is, um, what is it, Wednesday night sundown to Thursday night sundown. That's the Sabbath this week. I'm not sure if this is the last week for Wednesday night, thir Wednesday night sundown to Thursday night sundown. Oh, perfectly. You're not keeping the law perfectly, bro. 
It's impossible. Otherwise, you would not. You would need Yahweh Shai. Exactly. We would need a savior. If if we were able to keep the law perfectly, our bodies would be changed. To do that, the only way we can do that is if our bodies are changed. And Yahweh Shai is the only one that's going to change our bodies, in the twinkling of an eye, like it says in First Corinthians. First Thessalonians, I'm sorry, the fourth chapter. So, this men at Sakari, you got some, you got some work to do. Okay, but then again, that group is nothing but a hireling. So, what do you expect? They're more concerned with their image and making money than uh, than their doctrine and their teachings. Because if they were really concerned about their teachings, you wouldn't have individuals uh, from that group making those outlandish statements. Statements that show that that person is suffering from some serious delusion, talking about he keep the law perfectly. Man, you're seriously deluded, man. But the thing is, you haven't been instructed correctly. That's, that's your problem. Because your leaders are nothing but hirelings. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to end it there. On to the next one.